Hi everybody. Welcome back to Jenkins Boat Works. I am Chuck Jenkins. This is going to be the second uh, episode in the Chesapeake 18 kayak build. In the last episode we started looking at the pieces and the kit that we got and uh, in this episode we're going to get the panels, the bottom panels and the side panels put together with the shear clamp and uh, make the whole thing start looking like a boat. So we've been very busy on this. Uh, there, we're in a bit of a time crunch. Uh, as you may know, I'm building this for a friend who's going to use it in the Missouri River race, the MR340. And that's a race that goes from uh, the confluence of the Caw River with the Missouri, which is at Caw Point in, in downtown Kansas City, Missouri, and then runs 340 miles all the way to uh, St. Charles, Missouri, so basically St. Louis. So we're really excited about it, uh, and we've had quite a bit of collaboration, and uh, uh, Rusty was actually up here this last weekend helping with uh, some of the epoxy, uh, which actually we will likely have that clip in the next video, not this one. Uh, and that one, uh, we may get that one out here very quickly. Um, been working so hard on the boat, I haven't really had much time to edit video. But anyway, uh, we're glad you're here. If you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Uh, if you're coming back, uh, welcome. We're glad you're here. And so, Let's go ahead and jump in and see how we proceed with this putting this kit together. So these are the bottom panels and these are glued up similarly as to how we did the side panels. So just about 18 feet long and then I've moved the side panels over here got a table and a couple of sawhorses. The next thing I'm supposed to do is put on the shear clamps. Those are these pine pieces that are glued up and I've cut these down. They've been cut to 209 inches I believe so so that they end four inches from the front. I think it was four inches from the front, five inches from the back and I've got a little pencil mark right there. Then it says, scribe a line that's three quarters of an inch is in because these boards are one inch by three quarter and they need to hang out over the top edge here, proud, a quarter inch. And they said, use your like square or whatever to scribe your line three quarters of an inch inside on a panel. And I thought, well, that's kind of silly these shear clamps are three quarters by one inch. So when they go on there, they're gonna lay on there like this one over here does. That's the one inch width, but that's a three quarter inch width. So what I'm doing is I just clamped the three quarter inch width onto the edge, and I'm just gonna draw the line using the three quarter inch that I've got. And I did measure the board, and it's exactly three quarters of an inch. So once we scribe that line on there, then we'll know exactly where um, we'll turn it 90 degrees. We'll know exactly where it's supposed to lay on there. And then that'll cause the top quarter inch of this to stick out proud up above the panel. Seems easy enough. I don't know why they don't just suggest doing it that way. All right, more in a little bit. Okay, a couple other things to note. You want to be on the top edge, which means the longest edge. So in other words, this is your shear line. This is what connects to the bottom panel. And you know because this is the front of the boat here going up. So top of the boat, bottom of the boat. Now, if you look down here, 
you're going to see this sweeps. It's got a bit of a bow to it. And that's part of what creates the rocker for the whole kayak. So when I clamp that on there, it's not straight all the way down. It's, it's, you can see that big bow in it. And the other thing you got to really be conscious of is uh, making sure that you're gluing it on the right side. You want it on the inside, so you have to think about how this is going to go together. I had this uh, left panel flipped over the other way and was thinking to put it uh, underneath there on the, on the flip side. Well, that would have been terrible. I would have had one rail running on the outside on port and one on the inside on starboard. So uh, now these things are backwards. So in other words, the one here on the right will actually need to come over on the other side because these rails run on the inside of the, of the boat. That's gonna make more sense once we, once we get further along, but. Okay, so here's what I'm talking about. You want these shear clamps glued in on the inside of these panels. And when I first started doing this second one, I was almost gonna glue it up on the other side over here. Now, this one's still laying in here with three quarter width, and I gotta turn that one 90 degrees. This one I already turned, and so now you can see that it's sticking up proud above the panel about a quarter inch. Okay, so I've got epoxy mixed up. I put just a teeny bit of cedar sawdust in it uh, to, with the, with the uh, silica just to give it a little bit of color. And I got really close to the color of the okumi. You don't have to do this. But, uh, but I did. And then I've cut off my chip brush, kind of like Lou from Tips from a Shipwright tells you to do. And it does help. And uh, if anything, get some of the loose bristles out. Now I'm just taking it and I'm running along here where my three quarter inch line is. And it's just spreading it right on there. Once we get this on here, then we're going to be able to just put that shear clamp right on there and clamp it down. I'm trying to get enough on here so that it'll glue it up, but I don't want to squeeze out a ton either. Um, the other thing I did is I've got packing tape on the back side of this so that hopefully I don't get glue anywhere where I don't want it. Just glue it right down to our three quarter inch line and that's gonna leave us a quarter inch hanging over. They say to put these insides together so that the rails are outside of each other and then just use clamps on, on them both at the same time. But, um, hmm, I thought about using tight bond instead of epoxy. I've got tight bond three, and I feel sure that probably would work. I also thought about running some little bronze screws from the outside in, and I still may do that just for the aesthetics of it later, 
but at the moment I'm just gonna follow the plan. I don't need to get in any more trouble than I can than I can just by doing it the way they say to. We'll get a few more clamps on here and let it dry up. I tried for a couple of minutes to clamp these together like the instructions say. Everything was just going everywhere. You can see how I kind of slopped some of the epoxy onto the sides there. It's not a problem. We're going to be coating it all with epoxy anyway, but it just got really messy. I got enough clamps that I was able to put them all on there. You can see that it's got a bow to it. I feel real good about it. We've got it glued up, so we'll let it sit till tomorrow. And uh, hopefully one of the next steps here is just getting ready to stitch it together. So these are the side panels of the Chesapeake 18. We've got the front and the back stitched together and then a piece of wood just holding the whole thing open. So it's amazing how quickly you can actually see the shape of this thing. And we're just using copper wire. We drilled some little holes and just use some copper wire to stitch this together. We did have to plane off the shear clamps just a little bit up there so that it would go together and we still may take off just a little bit more in there. And we had to do the same thing in the back as well. All in all though, looking pretty good. Now the next thing is to get the bottom panels on and those are over here on the workbench and I actually have them stacked one on top of the other. We had to take the sure form plane laying over there and actually clean some of these edges off but we're going to clamp this down with these pieces exactly on top of each other and then drill holes down this straight edge line here on the edge of the bench and and uh, wire this together as well once we do that we should be able to open it carry it over here and hopefully see how it fits on the top of there. These panels are CNC cut and they're supposed to be uh, perfect. Uh, what I'm finding out is that this top piece is uh, it's just slightly longer than the bottom one. I've got them as close as I can get them. We're going to drill some holes. Now we're going to draw a line 3 eighths in. That's where you put your holes in. So I've got my T just slightly inside 3 8 because I know that my pencil on the edge of here is going to give me another 16th, 32nd to a 16th. Let's sharpen that up. You got a brand new pencil sharpener. It's like real old school. It's awesome.
This is 18 gauge copper wire. I just got it at the hardware store. Cutting it in lengths that are about three and a half to four inches long. Now we're just kind of finger tightening uh, the, the stitches here. So after I've stitched the two bottom panels together, and I've got it laid out on, on top of the side panels, I had a bit of a hard time figuring out what was front and back, but, and I actually had to flip it around because I had it on there the wrong way. That's the, that's the stern. Um, it's a, not a fine entry or exit. It's a fairly hard, curve with a straight up and down section for the stern. The bottom panel continues to have a fine entry at the stem. So in other words, it's got quite an angle on those side panels and there's, a, there's more of a rounded kind of angle here. Once you get it on there, you can see that it makes a much more fair curve with it sitting this way. The other thing that you can kind of tell is how wide it is, but that's actually pretty tricky with the way the whole thing's set out right now. So, I uh, had a couple other issues. I thought I had stitched this together fairly loosely, but I had a very difficult time opening it up, and some of these stitches I had to actually relax uh, completely, like there and there. So anyway, it's just, a, it's just a process and you kind of struggle along with it and figure it out. The other thing that was happening as I was opening this up, some of this was overlapping. This one was overlapping on top of this one. So I kind of open them back and forth to a point till wherever I get to a point where you've got a, a, just a regular crack for a seam here. See, it's still, trying to, it's still trying to overlap just a little bit going back, right down here. We'll get it worked out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.